Good morning, Lancers. Please stand and join us in our morning prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you for all the gifts and talents you have given us throughout our lives. As we are now becoming more active within our variety of clubs and activities, may we use these talents you have graciously present to serve our school and our community. We ask this, Father, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lancers, please be seated. Hello again, Lancers. My name is Ariel Reed, and this is Lancers in the News. And I'm Mr. Fabrice Fabricio Meza. Lancers, last week on Thursday, we celebrated the Mass of the Holy Spirit, in which we reflected upon the Holy Spirit's participation in our lives. During the homily, Father Sessi called upon the Faith in Action and Christian Leadership classes to give their personal view of the scriptures, concluding that the Holy Spirit is ever-present in our everyday life, and that we need to learn to accept this participation in order to grow closer to Christ. Today marks the beginning of Pep Week. This year's themes include Tacky Tourist Day for Monday, Music Genre Day for Tuesday, Hippie Day for Wednesday, and the theme Channel Your Inner Lancer for Thursday. The freshman theme for Thursday is Disney Channel, sophomores Animal Planet, juniors have ESPN, and seniors have Nickelodeon. For those that are interested in buying a Pep Week shirt, this Monday and Tuesday, they will be on sale for $10, which includes a free tie-dye for Wednesday's Hippie Day. If you are interested in helping with decorating your class's area for the quad, there will be decorating sessions after school from Monday through Wednesday. All decorating must be finished by Thursday, so please be sure to participate, Lancers. Student parking permit applications and instructions are now located outside of Mrs. Salcedo's office. Students that would like to park in the student lot during first semester should stop by the office to pick up a handout and complete it as soon as possible. Students will be issued a parking permit on a first-come, first-served basis. The cost is $30 per semester. Students will have this week and next week to purchase a permit, and to submit an application before entrance to the parking lot will require a permit. By Monday, September 23rd, only students will with a permit will be allowed to enter or park in the student lot. Any student that has a question regarding parking permits and fees are asked to stop by Mrs. Salcedo's office. We now turn to general news for the week. Today there will be a principal's advisory meeting after school at 3 p.m. The robotics club will be having their first meeting after school today in room 606. The video productions club will also be having a meeting today during lunch in room 502. Blessing Strings and Knots members, our first meeting of the year will be held today, Monday, September 16th from 3 until 4.30 p.m. in the Clothing Lab Room, 404. All new members are welcome to attend. The Digital Design Club meets this Thursday during lunch at Room 109. Attention all NHS members and applicants. There will be a brief general meeting today after school in the library. CSF members that have not signed up for their library hours are encouraged to do so in Room 405 this week. Space is limited, so please be sure to sign up as soon as possible. This Wednesday, there will be a minimum day due to the faculty meeting scheduled for 1.30 p.m. This Thursday, there will be an activity block scheduled for the last block of the day, in which we will be having our Pep Week rally. There will be no school this Friday due to the faculty faith formation. Finally, college announcements for this week include, This Wednesday, Azusa Pacific University will be visiting our campus. This Thursday, USC and Mount St. Mary's College will be sending a representative to Alma. If you are interested in meeting with any of these college representatives, Please see Mr. Scott at least one day prior to the visit in order to obtain a hall pass. For a schedule of college visits, the list is posted on Bishop Almont website, in the Counseling Department section, and outside the College Center. We now turn to the Lancer Sports Corner. Good Mama morning, Lancers, and welcome to the Sports Corner. I'm Soleo Sigueda. We begin our coverage with the girls' varsity volleyball team who played here at home last Tuesday against Walnut High School. The ladies would win the first set with a score of 25 to 16, along with the second set with a score of 25 to 17. Walnut would come back to win the third set 21 to 25, but Alma would ultimately win the final set with a score of 25 to 17. Then on Thursday, the team traveled to Ontario Christian High School and also won that game three sets to one. This week, the girls will play against Lucerna on Tuesday here at home. And on Thursday, the team will travel to play against Monrovia High School with both games starting at 6 p.m. The girls' tennis team 
traveled to Rancho Cucamonga on Thursday of last week and had a good performance, but unfortunately did not get the win. The team will travel to Pioneer High School on Friday with a game time of 3.15 p.m. The girls varsity golf team will play at the Santa Anita Golf Course this Wednesday. Also, this past Saturday, the 5-0 Bishbamont ice hockey team competed against Wilson High School of Long Beach and had a fantastic performance. Next week, the team will play against Edison High School at Lakewood Ice. Good luck to all our sports teams this coming week. We now turn to Jesse Lopez in the Lopez locker room. Good morning, Lancers. It's me, Jesse Lopez, reporting from the Lopez locker room. Both our crowd and the opponents were going crazy at the start of the game. Almont won the coin toss and chose to defer. The Lancers forced the Cougars to go three and out and punt. However, after a promising start, the Lancers would also be pushed back and forced to punt. A series of fumbles led to several scores by the Cougars. At the end of the first, the Cougars scored 17 unanswered. Just before the end of the first, the snap back to Koa went over his head. However, Koa was able to recover and connect with Tyler Vaughn's downfield. Just minutes later, Koa passed Arcanado for an 11-yard touchdown. Your Lancers 7, the Cougars 17, with 10.46 left in the half. After the kickoff by Matthew Zahn pinned the Cougars at their 5, Nicholas Barroquez and Chris Prieto would sack the Cougar quarterback in their end zone for a safety. 17-9, Cougars up. After Alma was able to keep the Cougars from scoring again, our offense's next drive will result in another Lancer touchdown. Unfortunately, the two-point conversion was no good. Score now 17-15 with 2.42 left in the half. Matthew Zahn works those kickoffs by once again pinning the Cougars at their 10. After the defense was able to hold them, the Lancers scored once again after Koa Haynes connected with Trayvon Sidney from 35 yards out to score another touchdown. The two-point conversion was no good. Lancers now up 21-17. The score would remain 21-17 to end the half. The Lancers were received to start the second half, but went three and out and were forced to punt. After it seemed that Rancho would have a big run, an Almont defender would poke the ball out to have another Lancer recover the ball. After Koa Haynes punted the ball to the 14, the Cougar quarterback would be called on intentional grounding in the end zone that would result in the safety. Almont now up 23-17. to The ball would bounce between possession until it ended with the Cougars to end the third. After Alma would make great stops to hold the Cougars within their own five and force a turnover, Haynes would hit Jacob Vaya down the middle, where he would juke two defenders and run it in for a touchdown. After Alma missed their two-point conversion, the Lancers would still remain ahead with a score 29-17, with 7.55 left in the fourth. The Cougars would then score on their own drive with 5.28 left, and then deflect a pass from Haynes that fell into the Cougars' hands. The Cougars would then strike with their own 30-yard pass downfield for a touchdown. Their attempt for two points is good, and they take the lead 32-29. After the Cougars missed their field goal attempt on another drive, the Lancers would have one last drive to score with 40 seconds left in the game. Haynes scrambles on a final play for the Lancers and is stopped. That's the ball game. Lancers lose 32-29. Lancers, although this last one was a heartbreaker, come out next week when your Lancers face off with Charter Oak at Kiefer Stadium at 7 p.m. Be there or don't be. Signing off from another edition of the Lopez Locker Room, I'm Jesse Lopez. Join me next week for more Alma football. And if you want to catch up on any sports team or general info, go to thelance.org. Well, that wraps up another edition of the Sports Corner. I'm Soleo Sigueda. Join us next week for another edition of the Sports Corner. Go Lancers! Teachers, if you would like your announcement to be included in Lances in the News, please feel free to email almotvidpro at gmail.com before 3 p.m. on Thursday. For Lances in the News, I'm Ariel Reed. And I'm Mr. Fabrice Fabricio Meza. Lances in the News is brought to you courtesy of the Bishop Almont Video Productions Club. To watch this edition of Lances in the News, as well as previous news editions, a sample of videos produced by the club, and a list of this week's events, visit bishopalmontvideo.com. On behalf of all of us here at Lance in the News, thanks for your attention and support. Happy, Happy Pep, Pep Week! Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore.